Welcome to the Blue Water Outlook Weekly Weather Briefing for July 16th, 2017. We remain in an amplified flow right here in the middle of summer, and my thoughts are this could be seasonal. This could last for on and off for most of the season, and occasionally we get that. Most seasons, though, it's much more uh, quiet, less amplified, and it does not persist. We, we get several different types of patterns. So because it's been in place for a while now, and it looks like it's going to remain in place, I would expect increasing impacts. And finally, the tropics are quiet, but that's not unusual. We had Tropical Storm Cindy early in the season, and it's very typical to get an early season system and then quiet down until the peak of the hurricane season. So right now what we have is we have some cooler water off the Pacific, um, Eastern Pacific. I have that circled there. And oftentimes the jet stream will dip south of the colder water or cooler water. And then um, downstream you'll see a equal and, or opposite reaction and the ridge will develop and it'll push up to the north. So this could be one reason why we have that persistent pattern because the jet stream is dipping south around this cooler water and then it's bulging to the north to the east. And we can see that in the flow. This is the dominant flow pattern right now. And we have a dip in the jet stream here around that cooler water. Then it bulges to the north and then it dips in the east. And that is really a very persistent dominant pattern. Now, before I talk about the forecast, let's look at the last seven days. You can see that we had um, a number of different what I would call summertime or much more localized type weather systems. Over the southeast U.S., you can see all this pot mark type pattern. That's your daily afternoon and evening thunderstorms. We had some very small scale excessive rain. It made national news on the flooding up between Milwaukee and down towards Chicago. Eastern Corn Belt has been wet, another wet week. Some interaction with the Gulf of Mexico moisture streaming in north in the south central U.S., but most of the area west of the uh, Missouri, or, or even west of the Mississippi for the most part, very little rain at all, quite dry. And if we look at the last 30 days, it shows the excessive rain or the most rain in the red, that's five inches, excessive rain in the purple. And that's one of the reasons why there's some stress on crops over the Eastern Corn Belt due to too much rain, while in the Western Corn Belt, not enough rain is causing problems, but you can really see where that heavy rain occurred, uh, both in the Ohio River Valley and then with Cindy pushing onshore. The other areas were smaller scale factors. So as you might expect, soil moisture is adequate, if not in excess, in areas of dark green and blue. And then we have below normal soil moisture in the areas of orange and red. Temperatures over the last week. Here we go. Red, 6 degrees are normal, above normal. And then due to clouds and that rain, as you can see over the Great Lakes, parts of the upper Midwest and the Ohio River Valley, and the Northeast U.S. as well, and also the, even the Southeast U.S. near normal temperatures because we get these afternoon clouds and thunderstorms. If we look at the entire month of July so far, you can really see very clearly this trend uh, centered over Montana of above normal temperatures, and we're looking at 10 to 15 degrees above normal for the month in that region. It's interesting here, this could be, sometimes I see something, I try to remind myself it'd be a good post later in the week. I noticed that we have these above normal temperatures right in here, and I think that corresponds to a fairly weak area of precipitation. Let's go back here and see if that's the case. Here's your 30 day, look at that right here. That is indeed the case. Just goes to show here how we're already getting some feedback here. These, this area here that has had less rain is warming up more than surrounding areas. You could also say that just the clouds and associated rain has allowed temperatures to warm up here as well. Um, sort of a parallel uh, viewpoint. But in any case, you can really see now that the this, soil's this drier. This will probably be warming up more than surrounding areas. Now, over the last week, we do have some areas in flood. You can see uh, in this USGS 
uh, image right here, these areas in here, you can see that's major flooding um, right here. And then we have some tributaries that got some heavy rain. And that's pretty typical this time of year is either the flooding's either localized or it's more of a regional tributary type flooding. The degree of flooding on the main stem rivers has really gone down this time of year. So as far as drought goes, you can see drought corresponds right through the middle part of the nation, the plains, uh, all the way from Texas up through the uh, upper Midwest, associated with that mean position of the ridge of high pressure. So that's the setup. Now let's look at the forecast. Well, this week, what, what do we see here different? Well, I think the biggest difference is that ridge of high pressure now has pushed a little bit further east. Last week it was over this area right in here, and now it's pushed over here. And what you see here is that's the core of highest anomaly for temperatures right over Nebraska, surrounding states. A little bit cooler air has worked up into the northwest U.S. And then here's that other trough. So here are your two troughs, and there's your ridge of high pressure right there. Nothing really going on in the tropics or it's a system out, not, it's not a system, a little disturbed area, a cluster of storms and showers. Nothing to get interested in right now. We'll keep an eye on it, but nothing at all this week. So precipitation this week, very similar to last week. It's going to, going to be dominated by regional type systems or small scale systems. This here is your land sea interaction, sea breeze activity daily, showers and thunderstorms mainly in the afternoon, in the early evening. We have a monsoon flow into the southwest U.S., which is typical, and then a very small scale with a small front in here, more heavy rain. Now, this is going to brush close to that region that had heavy rain last week, so that could pose an additional flood risk. Everywhere else, a very quiet week, nothing all that widespread as far as precipitation. Now, we get into the 21st to the 26th. What do we see? Well, that high pressure starts to pull back. One thing that's of interest here is usually as we get into August, we get these northwest flow type situations. We can get some pretty big rain producing systems that come down along the jet stream. I'm not sure if that'll be the case, but when I see this sort of a northwest flow here, I start to think that could be the case. The models aren't really picking up on that yet, but that'll be interesting to see if that works out. We get one or two of those systems in this six to 10 day period. Temperatures remain quite unusually hot over large parts of the nation, with the exception of the northeast U.S. and the Great Lakes, parts of the Ohio River Valley where that jet stream dips. Now we get out into the 11 to 15 day range out, the 26th through 31st. That ridge is even stronger. It's anchored again over the western uh, third of the U.S., and that's really the primary area, I think, all summer long where it's been anchored. This brings a dip in the jet stream a little bit stronger. So we're, we're more amplified in the 6 to 10 day range uh, than we are. Um, actually, this is the 11, 15, 11 to 15 day range. We're more amplified in this time frame than we are in the first 10 days. Thus, we're back over Montana and the western U.S. of well above normal temperatures and then cooler temperatures over the eastern part of the nation with the exception of the southeast. Now I want to see where are the greatest number of 100 degree temperatures this week. This is out of the next 10 days. We're looking at this area of yellow, this 5 to 7 out of the 10 in this region, nearing reaching 100 degrees or exceeding it. So very hot over the middle part of the nation over the next 10 days. Okay, precipitation. I think I talked about week one, and here's week two. It's really not showing a whole lot on week two, one way or the other, and that's sort of typical for midsummer. It's not going to always pick up uh, that precipitation. Soil moisture, well, with the exception of these, this feature here, land-ocean interaction along a front, monsoonal flow, scattered precipitation over the southeast U.S. Other than that, drying soils, getting very dry. We need a lot of rain in some of these spots due to the hot weather and dry weather. As far as hazards, we have mainly temperature hazards outlined in red, but we also have green, which is heavy rain prospects um, later this week into next week. 
So I think I've covered everything pretty good here. Um, I think the bottom line is we're going to be seeing on the drought monitor that comes out Thursday and subsequent Thursdays, I think we're going to be seeing a drought expansion and intensification over the middle part, the central and western parts of the U.S. Any rainfall is going to be regional, but this time of year, the atmosphere can hold a lot of moisture and that can produce heavy rain. And finally, that ridge will be retrograding as we get into the late, latter part of the month. That'll shift the hottest temperatures from the middle part of the U.S. and expand them back into the west. So that's the weekly weather briefing. If you have any questions, you can always contact me, John, at bluewateroutlook.com. And I will be updating uh, information on the heat and perhaps some heavy rain in spots throughout the week. Take care.